Next up, we have two more array methods that have to do with removing and adding elements, but rather than adding to the end or removing from the end like push and pop, shift and unshift work with the beginning or the start of the array. So they do the same thing, the location is different. Now two quick notes, first the naming, shift and unshift, will probably trip you up uh, at some point if you're brand new, I still occasionally confuse them, and second, the origin of the name has to do with other languages and other data structures that predate JavaScript. Shift and unshift have kind of become a uh, standard across programming languages, even if they don't seem like they make a ton of sense. If you want to learn more, you can research stacks and queues, and you can find the origin of push, pop, shift, and unshift, and where those names come from. So let's start by taking a look at unshift. On the docs, you can see it works very similarly to push, except it adds to the beginning. And just like push, it returns the new length of the array. So let's say that I'm doing the dishes. I've been recording and procrastinating, and there's a, a big pile of dishes, and I'm taking them over to the sink, and I'm going to stack them up. So the first thing I'll put down, let's make an array called uh, dishes to do. And I'll start with big platter. That goes on the bottom. I put that down first on my counter, and then I end up with a, a bowl next, or how about a big plate? So dishes to do dot unshift, that will add to the beginning, and we'll go with large plate, and then I'll add in another one, which is small plate. Notice I'm getting the return value, which is the new length of dishes to do, and you can see that everything has been added to the beginning. So we started with big platter, then I added the large plate on top, and then the small plate on top. And then let's say the last thing I'll shift or unshift in is a cup or maybe a cereal bowl. I'm definitely not drawing from real life experience, I promise. And then a mug. And then inside the mug, I put a dirty spoon. Okay. So now we can see dishes to do has a length of six that was returned and it does indeed have six items. The order is important. We added to the start each time. So now let's take a look at shift, which removes the first element from an array and it returns that removed element. So I'm gonna clear my console so I have a little more space. And let's say I'm ready to do the dishes. I have the sink on, I've got the soap out. The first thing I'm going to do is take that top item. So dishes to do dot shift. And I get dirty spoon. That's what I need to do next. And if we look at dishes to do, it is now shorter, has a length of five. Dirty spoon is no longer at the beginning. Let's call shift again and we get mug and then cereal bowl, small plates. We'll look at dishes to do it now only contains two items. There we go. And that's pretty much it to shift and unshift. They're pretty straightforward. If you ignore their confusing names, just add and remove to the beginning versus push and pop, which add and remove to the end. Now, one quick note about unshift is that you can add in multiple things at once. If I do this unshift and then I pass in multiple values. So let's go with fork and knife. What do you think dishes to do looks like? You can see that it added them in this order that I have here. It put them in as a chunk together, which is actually different than if I had unshifted them individually. So I'll do it again, but this time we'll do it with spoon. So we'll do a small spoon and a large spoon. So I'll do small spoon and then large spoon. And we look at dishes to do the first item went in first, but then the second item went in front of it. So all I want to show you is that unshifting items one at a time is actually different than unshifting multiple at once because the order is preserved. This entire chunk is just added in versus if we're adding to the beginning and then adding to the beginning again, and you know we keep adding to the start, that order is in reverse. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can unshift multiple items. I didn't really show this with push, but you can do this as well. We can push one thing in, we'll just push a platter to the end, which kind of breaks my whole uh, dishes idea here, metaphor, whatever, because I would be adding a platter underneath my stack of stuff. It's a lot of work, but if we look at dishes to do, there we are. Now, if we add in multiple things with push, we'll add in, uh, how about a cutting board and a cookie sheet? 
like that. If we look at dishes to do, they both were added and the order remains the same. And this would work the same if I was pushing them one at a time because we're adding to the end. So if I push cutting board and then I push cookie sheet, it doesn't matter if I push them at once or individually, but with unshift, it does matter. So that's it. There are four different really common methods you'll see. I would say out of the two, push and pop are most commonly used, but shift and unshift still come up quite a bit. As we learn more and start building things, you'll see when they come into play. I promise they're useful. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the other useful array methods that don't necessarily have to do with inserting to the beginning or removing from the beginning slash end.